Hey Valerie, Jeff. Hello guys, come on in. Come on in, oh my gosh, Mary. <laughs> You're gonna laugh. I, okay, so there's this running joke that my family gets on to see if I'm wearing my ring and I literally set it on the bathroom sink to put it on and I forgot to wear it. So I guess I'm single for this life. It's Jeff's family and they think it's funny when I don't wear my ring. So I'm not wearing it, but I'm glad we're back. Uh, it's been an intense last couple of weeks and I want to share with you all. I had the most miraculous two experiences on the retreat in Portugal and it was a yoga and adventure retreat. Yes, I know Jess, again, I'm not wearing it. So my family's gonna, gonna blow us up for a second. That's awesome. Sorry guys, <laughs> sorry Jeff actually. But anyways, we're back from Portugal. I have two stories that I need to share because they're going to really speak to you. They're going to really touch you and there's something in it for you. And it was like on this, <laughs> on this retreat, it wasn't really focused towards, it's not like our Yalapa retreats, like we're not doing the deep, deep spiritual intense work. We're not doing all things spiritual. I mean, there's a little bit of that piece with yoga, right? But this was a much different retreat. And what I want to say is even if you don't set the intention or make the space for the for the spirit to find you, it will. And it, and it happened a couple of times. The first question I want to ask is, does your intuition scare you? So we can think of when we hear something or we have like a premonition or a knowing, sometimes it is our trauma speaking. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago. And there's a there's a identifiable way to know what, what is your trauma and what is your intuition. And I'll link that in this replay if you want to go back and listen to that. But our intuition can scare us because we don't trust it, we don't understand it, or we don't feel like we'll be accepted for it. So when it comes to our gifts, our intuition, these knowings, it's like your one-way ticket to sometimes being made fun of, I'll be honest, or sometimes not being perceived in the right way, or sometimes being rejected, or sometimes not understanding yourself. And in these two experiences I want to share, and we'll do a little invitation for our own gifts and our own um, intuition and, and something special about ourselves to come through at the end. But I am so grateful for the two women who didn't know they did this for me, but really pushed me out of hiding. Um, I like to like keep my gifts in this safe little container and, and just keep them for organized settings and only those of you who want to hear about them to hear about them, right? Like that's something that I'm working through. And I had these two instances where two women pushed me out of hiding and really pushed me into like, I call it center stage with gifts and abilities. And I have no doubt this will happen to you. You will possibly want this to happen to you and it will give you something to work on and work with within your own inner being. Um, struggling with this right now as you're prepared to leave conventional medicine. I'm excited to work with you, Amanda, yes. So, okay. So it's, it's really amazing to think about on this retreat, in, in our whole life, everything is laid out right before us to be experienced. The first story I'm gonna get into is, happened on the last night we were there for dinner on the retreat, and we had a group of 20 or 21 people, and I was late to dinner, and not late, I mean, I was getting right, I, was, I wasn't late, I don't define, <laughs> I, there's no time and space and energy. I wasn't late, I was getting ready, and I got there a couple of minutes after the group, and I could have sat by anyone, anyone in this group and any conversations could have unfolded during this time. But when I walked in, I had a little jolt in my spirit and my heart to see that Jeff was, thanks Jeff, I was late. Um, Jeff was sitting next to this woman that I've grown quite fond of. And I didn't know her whole story, but I knew she lost her mom. She was 15. She has three young children now. So I'd say she's probably in her forties, but young woman, but she, she's lived some life. And she runs these retreats with us. And it was the first time I had met her. And like I said, we didn't really get into the like super spiritual stuff on this retreat. It was more like yoga and adventure and, and getting your feet wet. But oh boy, we plunged some people's feet into the water after this, I have to say. So we were talking and 
I noticed, I was like, I started to get a headache. And I had sat there and done my weird thing in functional medicine that I do, and I muscle tested myself with the foods. I'm like, it's not the foods. Everything I'm eating here is fine, even though I had a pretty good idea what was in the food, but not for sure. You know, perks of traveling, your body just rolls with it. Um, and I started to get this headache, and this woman next to me started talking about 10 years ago on a retreat, a medium had given her a reading for her mom and connected her to her mom. She said, oh, honey, your, your mom wants to connect to you. And something like pitter pattered in my heart in that moment. And I was like, I wanna help her connect. And it was just like, this part of me was like, no, 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 stay small, sit back here, sit back here. But I was getting a headache and I could feel her mom slipping into my body. And one thing that I've taught on is like when we are connectors, we're all connectors and everyone is intuitive, everyone's a medium, like newsflash, everyone has a gift. But some of us are here to use it more in this lifetime than others. So I could feel her mom slipping into my body and I thought, I am not going to be that person that's like, excuse me, I'm going to do a reading now. I was like, that just doesn't feel, it didn't feel right to me. So I said a prayer, I said, God, if you wanna use me, you're gonna to have to make it known in this in this situation. So the woman's talking and I'm listening and pretty soon I just start asking some questions and some more questions and we're talking and I'm like, how are these questions? We both were like, what am I saying? Like the woman was like, how does she know to ask that? Like, did you have a red barn growing up? And it was, in a, it was put into the conversation in a very sneaky spirit way that spirit would do this and it was very appropriate. And the more questions I asked, the more she answered, and it just flowed right into this, call it a connecting, call it a reading. And she started crying. She's like, I know this is my mom. And so I was giving her some, some messages about her traveling. And I said, your, your mom just, you know, the connection became clear. I was like, it just seems to me like your mom is saying something about where you traveled and lived in Belize. And she was like, she always wanted to travel and like that was on her list. And we gave a few other connecting pieces of like, you know, when you pay attention to your left side, I really see that your mom comes through to you on your left side. And it just was really beautiful. And it wasn't this pronounced thing, you know, it was just like, God's like, yep, you're gonna do this right now. And I'm like, okay, here we go. And I'm so thankful to Jeff because he was literally sitting behind me and I could feel myself in my own trauma wanting to back up and like kind of leave the situation because now everyone's starting to listen and now everyone's like, this is like a, a show being put on and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. Get me out, get me out of the spotlight and Jeff just pushes his body in behind me and it like gave me this boost and it gave me this energy and my head was <laughs> pounding. Um, and her mom's spirit was so freaking strong. It was like one way or another, this is going to, I'm going to connect you. And what's really, really cool about this, and she told me this after the connection became apparent, she said, when that first medium 10 years ago connected her, she's like, my sister was in trouble and the medium gave me a message for my sister. And she's like, my sister's in trouble right now. What does my mom have to say? And I just, let it flow right through me and it was so sometimes our gifts our abilities our intuition all the things can scare us and we want to back away and we want to hide and some of us aren't like me and we want to shout them for the rooftops and and go forward with them and that's great and but I know there's a lot of people and that because I work with you all and I talk to you and you're my friends and you're my community that we like it kind of freaks us out and it's like this weird thing we don't want to talk about but God's going to make it known. So we're, I feel everyone can be a connector just with the desire to serve and the desire to trust the spirit and what it's going to do for you. And healing and feeling energy is, we are energy beings. That's like what we're born as. Like, like God, literally, I, this is how I imagine creation going. God sneezes and then we're all here and we're just like a little particle of God. But in this physical form, this meat suit, we're energy in physical form. So like disease and feelings and symptoms, like it's all just starts in our energy field and it manifests into physical. We are, the way we carry ourselves, to the way we talk, to the weight we wear, to our skin, to our health, to our emotions, to our mental state, it's all physical manifestation of energy field. So it's impossible for you not to feel and experience, give energy, read energy. You're doing it all the time. We just put these like kind of tidally names to it like, psychic medium intuitive 
we're all those, we're everyone is those things. So it's like kind of like normalizing it. And if you're drawn to this energy healing live thing, like you have gifts and you have things that are to be shared. So I want to help you get there. Second story, I want to call this miracles on a plane because I know I jinxed myself when the woman standing in front of us, we, there was like this big mast aboard in Portugal and this woman's boarding pass is sticking out of her book and Jeff's like, she's sitting next to us and Jeff kind of like made friendly banter with her and he's like, oh, we're sitting next to you. And I was like, don't worry, we're weird, but we're like not that weird. They're probably way weirder people than us on the plane. Well, no, 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 I was definitely the weirdest one. Definitely the weirdest one, definitely the weirdest situation definitely weirder than the person's horrible gas in front of us. Jeff can attest to that. It was the worst flight ever besides this part. But I was literally the weirdest person on the plane. So if God's trying to do something through you in public, just remember the story because it's going to happen. I promise you'll be like working with a patient or answering a call or I don't know, working in your shop or doing all the things and then you're gonna have this weird situation and it's both both glorious and taxing when this happens and so we're on the plane sitting next to this woman we already let her know we're kind of weird but we're even weirder than she thought and we talked a little bit but i could tell she just you know was getting like tired she'd asked the stewardess um we had dialogued a little bit and she's like oh so you're a nurse practitioner and she's this she asked the stewardess for medication and the stewardess said well, we don't have Tylenol, but they brought her acetaminophen and <laughs> funny nurse joke. But um, so they brought her some medication. She's like, which one should I take? And in my head, I'm like, neither. It's toxic, but whatever. <laughs> Do what you want, lady. And so I just did this like quick muscle test. She had no idea what I was doing. And I was like, mm, I think your body really wants this one. And it was the ibuprofen. And I told her to hold the Tylenol for, for later. So I, could, I knew she had a headache and I could feel it because I'm sitting like in this woman's energy field, basically on her lap. And I'm reading my Kindle and I have my little lap pillow and I'm just like, I'm a little, doing my little thing. And I get this vision of me laying hands on this woman. I'm like, no, 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 not right now. God, just not right now. Like I'm busy. This is going to be weird. And she looked over to me and our like dark circles forming under her eyes. And she goes, I never get migraines. And I'm like, nope, not right now. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. And... <laughs> She made eye contact and then I saw that vision again of me laying hands on her and I'm like, okay, so obviously my headache's not going to go away until this woman's headache goes away. So it really was just for my own personal gain and, and the spirit's prompting. And so I'm like, I just take a deep breath in and Jeff knowingly like grabbed the stuff out of my lap. He told me later, he's like, I knew something was going to happen with that woman. As soon as I saw her boarding pass that she was sitting next to us, I'm like, I didn't know anything was going to happen instead of snakes on a plane, it was freaks on a plane. And Jeff and I were the freaks until this happened, like until I started getting this vision. So anyway, she's got a headache and I turned to her and I asked her and I said, have you ever received alternative healing is what I called it. I mean, what do you call it? <laughs> or like acupressure. And she was like, no, is that what you do? And I was like, yeah, how do you explain it? Right? So I asked her, I was like, are you open to touch? And she said, please. So she's sitting and I'm like, okay, really awkward, right? Like holding my hands on her. So I start with some neurovascular points in her head and I'm, and I can feel this energy pulsating and I can see like all these hikes she went on on vacation and depleting her electrolytes. And I see a banana. I'm like, oh honey, you need potassium. Like you need a banana when you get off a plane. I'm Emma. I thought of you the whole time. This, I know like I'm not alone that this stuff happens to you too. And so I'm, I'm working on her head and like her, surprisingly enough, the right side was clearing, but not the left side. I wanted to ask her about her female relationships on the, on the trip. Later, she told me her daughter-in-law, like kind of threw a wrench to the things. And, um, but I'm like really in this flow and I'm really losing myself in the process. I can like feel my hands going back to it. And when I looked at my right hand on her, it was her left temple, the one that wouldn't clear it was like this happens sometimes when i'm working on people when it's a super intense energy exchange i don't know how to explain this and please put in the comments if you a think i'm weird or b or have had this happen before my hand is on her and it's like no longer my hand like i looked at like i'm, I'm holding her right so i'm looking at my hand i'm like 
it just felt disconnected from me. I felt like I was looking at someone else's hand. And that's happened before when the energy exchange has been super powerful. So we're, I don't know how long I was doing this. Um, gosh, at least five minutes, maybe 10. And then I just see my friendly flight neighbor, her, her dark circles are draining and her energy's coming back. And she looks over at Jeff. She was like, gosh, that was amazing. She's a keeper. And I'm like nudging Jeff, like, yeah, come on. Like, look, you know, I'm just an ordinary woman to him. And she was like, my pain. I asked her, I was like, rate your pain before, rate your pain after. It's the thing I like to do. She said 10 out of 10 to two out of 10. She's like, I don't know how I would have got through, through customs and done all this stuff. And really she was back to like chatty chip herself. But here's the thing. I had to face all the rejection standing in, in the way of this like miracle. And it felt so good to be able to help her heal. And like, she like skipped off without her acetaminophen, her Tylenol. Um, she was like, I'm going to get a banana. And she was like, chat, chat, chat. And she was fine. And that felt like really, really good. And my headache went away because her headache went away. It was so nice. But if I'm being honest, when I saw that vision come through my head, I was like, mm -mm, nope, no, 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 no. I was like, what if she rejects my offer? What if it doesn't help? And I'm just like this weirdo that asked to hold her head that she's never met. What if I look weird to other passengers just because, you know, the, the night before at dinner, people were like listening. And then we ended up talking about like afterlife and angel numbers and signs after that. And the whole table's like, and that was a lot. I love it. But, it, you know, it's a lot. You never know who's watching, who's listening. And then I'm like, who do I think I am? And I kid you not, those of you who lovingly mock me as Jesus, Jen, here he comes. His spirit just comes right in. And he said, Jen, they mocked me until I was after I was, I died after I was dead. They mocked me too and I was like, okay. I didn't care anymore. I was like, I thought of Jesus' as bravery. His, I don't give a flip whatever pe other people think, his desire to serve the mission. And I just was like, all right, God, I can't do this. I'm a human, but something's gonna come through this body. And I laid hands on her and then before I knew my like hand was not my hand. So what I know for sure and why I'm sharing this story is that we all have the ability in our hands to heal. We all have the ability in our hearts to connect to angels, loved ones, the other side, our angel numbers, our spirits. And if this is resonating with you, if you this excites you, if this interests you, or if it freaks you out, it's for you. I promise. And I want to help us today in this healing that we'll do to uncover our gifts and maybe ask like how the spirit wants to use you whether it's in your work, in your family, with your kids, like there's something that you're wanting to be shown, just like my little flash of helping this woman on a plane. Like I saw it, rejected it, and that's okay. We have free will. I could have said, I don't want anything to do with this. I would have had a headache probably the whole flight until she got away. <laughs> but there's something beautiful there and something that it felt, I was so energized by those two experiences. And then my logic brain was like, now how do I just make my business like that? So it's all impromptu. And then I send these people invoices after and then like, it won't work like that. But being in the flow, there's a beautiful thing. And you can have this too. So before we start, let me check in with the comments. And I would love to hear any stories, either in the comments, or if you want to request to join, um, there's power in your story. And if you want to share a story, if you have an angel moment or an intuition incident like this, I would love for you to tell it with people because then we can recognize it, right? Like it's, you could have, I could have thought that whole time at dinner, I just had a headache. Like it was the zucchini boat I ate, but it wasn't like, it was something so much greater. So, um, me too. I've been getting frequent migraines for the first time in my life. When you're getting a headache, so on the physical side of things, it's immune system activation. But when there's a spirit coming in to to ask us to be the channel, any toxicity in our body, I was in Portugal for a week, I just probably like ate some things, you know, whatever. Any toxicity in the body like rises up. And so anything that my body was was housing like came up to the surface. And then I had another reading uh, we'd been back for like four or five days and I had cleansed a lot and I didn't, you know, like you guys know me, if, if we've, if we're friends or we work together, like I don't, I still don't engage in the things that I know that hurt my body, but you're just eating other people's food. You're, you're not in your environment. You're not doing your normal detox stuff. 
So when that high frequency hits your body, any toxicity is going to go boop and it's going to try to hit the surface and want to come out. So just notice if you're getting a headache and you're like, oh, well, I just had chocolate chips and coffee and I haven't slept. Like, okay, there's physical reason. But if you're like, there's really not a reason that I should be having a headache right now, check in with your energy body, check in with the spirit. Um, I've experienced something similar kind of out of body. It is the strangest thing. And I felt like my hands have like sunk into the person's head before. And I was like in their head without being in their head. It was so weird. I don't know. Ooh, Amanda, I had a premonition years ago with a labor patient. Um, do you want to share if you're still on? Like we can, I can bring you on now. I'll, I'll try to send a request. Mine is more deja vu experience. I dream of certain scenes or things then months later when I'm in the same setting, it's always pivotal and intense moments in my life. That is really cool. Jeff's been having a lot of deja vu. Who knows like the thing on deja vu? I honestly don't know a ton on deja vu other than it's like, like kind of a glitch, glitch in the matrix. So if you know about deja vu, I want to hear about it. Um, okay. So Amanda, so she had the premonition about the laboring patient. I was back in my childhood body on the farm, witnessing a uterine prolapse in a farm animal. I casually brought this up with the doc. Minutes later, the mom's uterus prolapsed. Did your, I mean, I'm curious, was your timing there pretty pivotal? Like, were you able to, were you and the doctor able to respond and react? Like, did your intuition give you kind of the upper hand? I'd be curious to, to know about that. Um, okay. Other Amanda, who's also a nurse, nurse practitioner. <laughs> I very much needed this tonight. I'm so excited to work through this with you. Yes. Mm, so good. Um, Jeff said I get lots of it and then goes away for a bit. So on and so forth. Like Jeff, like you get dizzy. Like you almost like pass out. I've had deja vu, but it's just kind of like a surreal feeling. But Jeff has this like visceral physical response that he almost like falls over. Um, I have deja vu and dream premonitions often. There are messages guided to tell you to pay attention more. Mm, Could have told you that Jeff, but I'm just kidding. Love you, babe. <laughs> um, I say that because he locked me out yesterday when he went to the store. I was sitting out in the yard and he locked the door and I said, ah, awareness. And then he probably had deja vu, but I'm kidding. I don't think he had deja vu yesterday at all. Um, it's just me being petty. Hey, Becca. Good to see you, girl. Okay. Awesome. So thank you, Amanda, for sharing that. I guess we didn't have to bring you on. It's pretty straightforward. What questions do you have, if anything, before? I want to do just a quick... Quick, quick little um, dip into our into our gifts. Just said, Emma, can you have a dream about me? Asking you shall receive. I'm not kidding. I ask for when I need answers. Like I ask for things in my dreams before I go to bed, and sometimes it's old trauma that comes up, and sometimes it's guidance and intuition. <sighs> dreams for two two things on dreams before we dive in a little bit. Um, Anything we don't process in the conscious waking life is going to surface and make its way up through the dream. So I have a client who he said he witnessed a really traumatic incident involving someone's death and a voluntary death. And he, he lately, and this was years and years ago, having dreams of this now and it was just like now that we've we've debrided so much other trauma out of his body that it's like the next thing to come up and it's processing in the dream space so your dreams that can happen or i've had um i'm laughing at jeff making sly remarks in the comments i've had a, a i had a knowing so someone that i was working with um a mentor of mine was had a theme in their comments about their relationship and I was like, I just kind of brushed it aside. Like, don't think that about their relationship, Jen. Don't judge them. And I kept brushing it aside, brushing it aside. And it, and then I, it came up. I had a dream that they were unfaithful in their relationship. And I don't think this person is or ever would be. But I think that's, I think that's something they're ruminating on or like feeling right. And and then I'm watching their stories on Instagram, and they're like joking about like divorce court and I'm like oh, oh okay like my that first intuition that I had in person with them I was like don't think that about that Jen I don't think they would ever be unfaithful with their partner 
but I think they're at a place in their life where that that's coming up. They're working through that energy. Came up in my dreams. I'm seeing it more and more. So point being, don't ignore your intuition. Just listen to it. And you probably won't have dreams about it that make you feel weird. That you're having dreams about other people's relationships. Very strange. Very strange. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm just laughing at you guys in the comments. I won't even read them out loud. Oh, hey, Rosa. Awesome. Well, let's get to the healing. And then if anyone wants to come on and, and share like an angel moment or an intuition incident on video on comments, um, we'd love to hear more. Because this is what, when I listen to these stories from other people, it's like, it's so real, you know? You don't feel so alone in, in what you experience and you can feel a little bit more optimistic about your life. Okay, so let's settle in. I think this one's gonna be quick. Feels just like a real short burst that wants to come in. Bring your hands to your solar plexus. This is where your relationship with yourself lives. Notice a feel with this energy center. If it feels kind of dim, dull, middle ground, just enough energy to keep it alive, but not enough to be anything spectacular. Or do you feel really powerful and lots of energy bursting through here? Notice if you've had any digestive issues in the last three to five days, the last week, the last month. This energy center is shut down. I'm gonna, I'm gonna thread in a quick little lesson that I'm being prompted to share. Being in another country, I didn't have any digestive issues with my very, very sensitive body except for one day, one night, and leading into the next day. And it was after a day that I particularly felt whipped and pulled around by another's agenda. So when this solar plexus, this place in our body is weakened, it's like someone, something, some other energy's tentacles in our body, literally we feel like we're being pulled around, whipped around, um, by a by a, a leash okay, we're just doing an assessment a scan here okay and with your hand on this energy center I want you to think about when you felt the most powerful in your life pay attention to your body pay attention to this energy center Jeff, I'm getting stuff for you. I hope that you're doing this and not just trolling in my comments. <laughs> Think about when you felt the most powerful. Notice how your body feels, how this energy center feels, what you were doing, what you were thinking, what you were feeling. Pause there and notice it was the internal feeling. It had nothing to do with but something else, something else was something or someone else was doing, giving, saying. It's what you felt on the inside. Okay, now feel this energy center start to pick up a little bit in heat and frequency and buzziness, whatever you're feeling. Notice that here. Think of a time where you felt whipped around, pulled around by another's expectations, agenda. when you just felt powerless. Something was taken from you, from underneath you. Feel that light start to dim. This is your house, this is your home. You live inside your body, so take a deep breath in. Sweep it up, exhale, clean out your house. Two more, inhale deep breath in. Think about sweeping up energy air up through your house. Exhale, blow it out. Do one more, deep breath in. 
Hold it at the top here, hold it. This powerlessness feeling, this energy, this trauma saved in the body. I want you in three, two, one, blow it out. There you go. Let it go. Okay. Come back to this energy center. This is where your power, this is where you can access your gifts. So come back to that powerful feeling when you felt just on top of the world, something that makes you feel incredible. Asking the spirit to come through your body, just give you a clue, a nudging, an image, a knowing about your gifts. So maybe like me, you see yourself laying hands on a stranger on an airplane, reading for a woman at the dinner table to connect with her mom. You see yourself on podcasts, in parks, hosting healing circles, having clients. Maybe you're incognito, doing this work under a typical job title through your books, through your writing, through being a mom, through teaching, through your patients you see. Ask for a vision, a knowing, a feeling of what you're doing and how to do it. Check in with your solar plexus. Notice it buzzing and strong here. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, sigh it out. Okay, come back to your body. Jot something down if you need to jot it down. How did that feel? Does anyone want to share comments or video what they felt, what they received? We are so powerful and we want to play small. We're all like me a little bit. <laughs> Even if we have a little bit more of a extroverted fire personality, say you're a Leo in Leo season, there's some people who naturally want to be seen and be on center stage and that's great. But everyone faces fear of rejection. Everyone's afraid to be seen for who they truly are. Everyone doubts themselves and is even afraid of their abilities at times, right? Emma saw Easter eggs. Jess saw a large eye. Beautiful. Beautiful. Jess, I want to encourage you on that. It seems like your intuition from our work together when you saw that bunt cake and you know what that meant and led into, you might get a little glimpse of something. A little glimpse. Oh, Amanda. Okay, I'm going to bring you on. Um, a little glimpse of something, right? And then it, it expands. So when you're, when intuition's coming in, it's going to give you like a bread trail. It's not just going to show you everything at once. It could, but most of the time it's a bread trail. When I'm doing readings or sessions, it's like I see lungs and then I see a message and then I see someone's dog that had passed and then I see the message from the dad who died of lung cancer about the dog and like it just, it all comes together. So bread, bread crumbs, intuitive pictionary. <laughs> My body felt like it was swaying. Okay, Amanda, I'm gonna, let me see. Also, I love your handle, kind of crunchy on P. That's great. Let me see. Hey. Hi. Can you hear how me you? okay? Yeah, how are you? I was in the bathtub during that, so. The best. So I am trying to just right here, my face. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I wanted to share because like when you started out, you were talking about fear of rejection, which is like the biggest thing that I'm trying to work through right now as I'm like, we'll be talking about this, but like preparing to get more into functional medicine and mm -hmm. leaving where I've been for 14 years and family practice. Mm -hmm. And like through COVID, that has been such a silver lining for me um, mm -hmm. because I really like was the black sheep. And so I already got kind of a taste of what that felt like. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, a big practice and everything. But when you were talking about when you felt more, most powerful mm -hmm. for me, um, that was like the day that I graduated with my NP and, yeah. <laughs> um, I had my daughter and I was 18. I was a single mom. Like I made it through all my nursing programs as a single wow. And it was a really powerful day. And that day I was the only person out of like all my graduating class where I put like a saying on my cap 
And they're like, wasn't any rules about it or anything, but I was like so embarrassed about it. I'm like, oh my gosh, nobody else did this. Like, I'm not, I don't want to wear it. Like I was going to rip it. I like put- We all did it in BSN school. We, <laughs> nobody did. Nobody did. And really? oh, so I was the only one. And I just remember being like so embarrassed and like, oh my gosh, I, I can't go up there. And then when I got up there, it was like so powerful. And mm -hmm. so anyways, that was like the vision that I got. And then I also remembered- in my first nursing program that um, I was the only one that wanted to wear like the old school nursing cap. My grandma was like graduated from nursing school. She's 87 now when like you couldn't be married and you know, like St. Luke's first graduating class is really, really cool. Wow. And so I wanted my nursing picture to match hers like in her cap. And I was mm -hmm. the only person that wore it in pictures then too. And so and it's just, it just was interesting how all of that came up for me because I'm like back into that space now, like worrying what everybody's going to say about me. Am I going to be mocked? Like, Oh, she's going to have to do this. You know, who knows? Like she's going to fail kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So anyways, just thought I would share that. Emma said, and she's very intuitive leading the way. Like that's what she's hearing. And I see um, it's like themes that come up. So it, it, we can go through cycles that seem like they repeat themselves, but in different situations or circumstances and like with COVID with the nursing cap. And now I'm sure when I, when I see you, we'll, we'll dive into this, but there's another way you're being asked to like wear mm -hmm. the cap and just be kind of, mm -hmm. but then, but when you wear the cap and you think you're weird and then you, you get up on stage and then you can see like the back corner of all the people also wearing the cap, you're like, oh, I didn't know you were here. Like mm -hmm. that's how it's been. Right. <laughs> well, um, and just like, you know, just jumping out and doing it and like the rewards after Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like ripping off the bandaid or, you know, mm -hmm. just all of those. Yeah. And I could see you when we, I was doing the healing. I literally saw you in your conventional NP office, like, like just having this, like knowing about people's energy bodies and intuition about them. And like, it's, it's so strong in you. I'm just finally coming into all that. Like I've always been that way. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the people that are close to me kind of know that. And mm -hmm. I've had patients say to me, like, you just always know what's going on, even if I don't have to say it. And mm -hmm. it definitely is one of my gifts. It just has always held me back. It's like I use it for other people, but I it holds me back. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, so good. Anyway. Jess said, oh my gosh, well, I've gotten this message a lot lately. Um, use these experiences from Emma as a path to feeling powerful versus fear to fuel. And here's to what others duck them. Who cares? This is from just what other people think. And she corrected herself on duck. But I like it. Yeah. That happened <laughs> a lot. Awesome. Yeah. I love Thanks. it. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty, guys. And I think if you just click the top right X, it'll quit you out of this so that you're... Leave. <laughs> cool. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me tonight. We'll be back on Sundays now. I don't, I can't think of, I know there's like a Sunday I'm traveling, but whatever, we'll be here. Several more weeks until future notice. Please, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have something you want to share, if you have a topic you want to hear about, like that amazing automated uh, writing session we did like a couple months ago that came from a request, DM me, send me any, and I'll do my best to get back to the DMs within time, but I want to hear what your question's about. If you need healing on a particular subject or matter in your body, send it to me. These are about the community. This is what we can do for you. And don't forget in October 6th, 7th, and 8th, it's a Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday afternoon, we have the energy healing certification here in Kansas City that I'm leading. And the early bird pricing is available for the next month. It will be, we'll post it on social media. It'll come out in the email newsletter. But if you want it now, if you're like, hey, I'm in, just send me a DM. I will, um, or my VA will send you the link to sign up for the energy healing. And because spots will fill up, it'll sell out. But I'm offering early bird pricing, leaking it out to this community that's so engaged. So if you want to join us in October, includes an online course and in-person training and a certification, send me a message. And I will see you next week.